um, you go to the homework notebook. Okay, so you have to open the IPYND uh, file that you copied over into your directory. You should have done it during uh, the lab session. Um, you should have gotten homework one and uh, lab one. Um, and then what you do is you open that notebook and then you can go ahead and make changes here. Um, so let's say two plus two, right? And then save it or, and then uh, submit it or whatever, you know, make sure you like your work, um, but obviously answer the correct answers. Don't add any fields or whatever, but just kind of go through the whole thing uh, and take it step by step. Just ignore anything related to greater, uh, anything related to it. So during the, while you're doing this stuff, uh, it will, it basically it'll check the syntax for you, uh, except that it doesn't work. And at the very end, it'll say to get, to go to submit your work. Um, it's something like greater export or something. Don't do it that way. Okay. Because it's not going to work because Otter is still uh, on the no fun list. Um, of course, it's working for me, just no one else, which I, I think is the best solution of all time. Uh, so what you do, oh, actually, I forgot, I do have homework one over here. Hopefully it's not filled in. Um, if it is, it'll be a lot easier for you. So basically you make your changes. Um, and hey, look, you get the free answer of number two or number one. Okay, so you make sure that works. Uh, and then once you're complete and you're happy with it, you have to go to save it. Okay, you see if there's a little dot here, that means it's not saved. Okay, so you gotta make sure you save it first. You can do that either by hitting control S, uh, which I recommend you do a lot. Uh, and if you ever do any programming or whatever in the future, you will find that control S is like, you're, you just kind of hit it all the time, everywhere, all like doing whatever, because you're so afraid of losing work. So, but you can also do file, save, here but then when you're ready to submit it you go to file while it's open after it's saved and do download okay and then it's going to say okay this is the file name it's going to save it somewhere and then i did not open the browser let's see uh so then hopefully there's nothing questionable there uh, so then there's the file, right? Okay, it's in my downloads directory. Um, and, but you don't really need to see that as much as you go back to your browser and you go to, do I have the grade scope one up here? Is this there? No, I think I forgot. Yeah, I think I. Oh, yeah. Oh, here it is. Okay, so then you go into DS100. Okay, I'm not actually going to do this, but then you go into the individual assignment. But let's do my test one so that we don't see everyone's grades. Then you go into the individual assignment. I'm assuming that you will not get a configure auto grader. It'll take you directly to manage submissions, but who knows? Uh, so then you go to manage submissions. Okay. And then you do upload submission. Then you can drag and drop if you want, but I usually just do it this way. Uh, and we will see, uh, what was it, H, W, something or another. Okay, and then you can type in a name, or I assume you can't type in a name, I can type in a name. But I'm gonna submit it as myself. I got a lot of questions wrong, so that should be fun. Um, and then basically you're done. Are there any questions? Does that make sense to everybody? Anyone, Euler? Oh, and also, anybody who's still having trouble with the cluster, um, just also let us know so that we can help you with that. Please, please uh, just send us an email. Yeah. Um, and I assume the two students who are having trouble on Friday, you're meeting with them tomorrow morning? Yeah. Okay. So hopefully that'll get sorted out. Uh, my very clear but overly technical explanation to IT seemed to have confused them more than it helped. Uh, so hopefully this will make progress. Um, do me a favor, I'm going to tell you today, so don't worry about it today, but next time you come to class, try not to sit in that section because I tend to stand here. And so I tend to put my back to you and I feel bad. So if you could sit kind of over in this area, be, uh, it's easier for me without having to look over my shoulder all the time. Um, but if you forget, it's not the end of the world, but I will, I will comment and make fun. Um,
Uh, let's see. All right. Uh, here is grade scope again, as you predicted, Graham. All right. Any other questions? Any other problems anybody's having? I can't do anything about the Wi Fi. If I was nicer, I would share my hotspot, but I'm not going to. Uh, just fix this. And isn't it F11? Never seems to work. Go. Oh, there we go. All right. Uh, so announcements. Um, so there are updated Jupiter launch instructions. If you are lucky, uh, it will actually launch Otter. So basically, you have to put in something in the pre-launch command. Uh, it has been unsuccessful for some people so far. Uh, so try it. If it works, awesome. Now you have Otter. So basically, the way you know it works is you put it in the pre-launch, you launch a new Jupyter session, and then in the top of one of those homeworks or labs or whatever, that very top block where it says import otter, it will not give an error. I'm going to take this off if you don't mind. Uh, let's see. Oh, so I know some of you are, uh, I think it's targeted at freshman and sophomore. I know that some of you are that. Um, so there's this welcome back mini hack being put on by Spark on the 2nd of October. Uh, I want to say Saturday, basically. It's all day, but it's a mini hack because it's only one day. Um, software engineering uh, background is not required. Uh, I am going to be MC. So uh, I don't know. You'll come in here and more of my bad jokes. I have a flyer here if you want it. Um, but you can also go to that URL. Oh, I was actually going to open the URL. See it. Um, oh, and so if you don't want to take the paper, there's also a QR code these you can scan uh, because you know ink on paper. Um, so yeah, so it starts at nine. I know that's unreasonable on a Saturday, but it is what it is. Um, and basically, you uh, kind of you can either come with a team or you kind of join a team and you build something and uh, then you get prizes and the prizes are pretty good. Um, really, you don't list the prizes on the main page. That's like why anybody goes. Um, but there's, I wanna say there's like an Oculus. Uh, why are those stupid prizes? Oh, come on. Oh, well, I don't know what the prizes are. They're good though. Uh, I remember thinking that when I saw it earlier, but now I can't remember what they were. Um, so yeah, uh, it's a good way to meet people. It's a good way to win stuff uh, and have a good time uh, fooling around with technology. Any questions? Uh, as you can see, as we as uh, things start to ease up as we go over the course of the semester, the number of announcements goes down, uh, which I uh, you know appreciate. All right. How do I screw this up every time? All right, so today we'll start off with um, just kind of reviewing the table operations. Um, they are all nicely written out here. Uh, you know, the stuff I'm kind of cribbing from uses a, a lot of words on slides. I don't normally, um, but you know, we'll try something new. So uh, the big thing to remember is um, kind of these terms are very common uh, kind of in anything related to software. So select means go get stuff, right? Drop means get rid of, uh, sort. I hope you can figure out what that one means. Um, and then where is usually like a filter. So they're very similar to English, um, but just keep in mind that those are really common terms. So if you see those, you'll likely, it, it likely means the same thing. All right. All right, so numbers. Does everybody know what a number is? It's like three in the afternoon. You have no excuse for being so sleepy. All right, let's do our demo. Assuming I can find it. All right, then let's try blowing this up. Um, make sure I have my cheat sheet open because otherwise I can't do it. Um, all right, so I conveniently wrote two plus two in it before. Um, does anybody 
they know, okay, so, so think back to math days, okay? If, you, if you've done programming, you probably know this already, um, but if you haven't, think back to your math days, like arithmetic. Does anybody know what type of number that four is? An integer, okay? Um, so do you remember real numbers? Do you remember real numbers? Uh, are they, they're nowhere near as much fun as imaginary numbers, right? Uh, personally, got to be one of my favorite things in, in like any kind of science. It's like, yeah, we're just going to straight up call them imaginary. Um, so, okay, so an integer is any number, right, uh, that is a real number, but does not have anything that's no partial part of the number, all right? This is um, like, there's all their terms for this in mathematics, but in programming, uh, you know, so kind of by extension data science, we always call them integers. Uh, so you may remember natural numbers, for example. That's not, like, we don't use that term. Integers, they can be negative or positive, but they're always whole numbers, okay? Oh, whole numbers, that's another one. Um, all right, so if I do this, okay, I probably could have just typed this, let's see. Um, so if I do this, does anybody know what that kind of number is called? So it's still a real number, right? Any guesses? Go ahead. A float. Okay. Not 100% sure where the term like float comes from, but basically it's any number. Now this is where it's dis where the distinction is important. It's any number with a decimal. It doesn't actually have to have like any, anything over here. Okay. So in other words, this could be zero, okay? And it's still a float. So basically the difference between an integer and a float kind of doesn't really have anything to do with what kind of number it is per se. It's literally the, whether or not it has a decimal. Does that make sense? The reason for this, we'll show you in a bit. All right, and then, and actually, oh, sorry. I, I jumped my own gun here. Um, so if I do that, See, that's still a float because it has, it'll put the dot zero there. Um, and then I think I misspoke the other day because uh, this was mixing up programming languages. Um, all right, does anybody know what that will, well, that's really hard. Let's just execute it. Does anybody have a theory as to what that did? So I assume you can't do that math in your head. I know I can. <clears throat> right on. All right. So sometimes called an exponent. Um, the part where I made a mistake is that uh, in some languages, you do that with what's called a carrot, so the little hat. Um, and in some, you don't. And in, in, in actually in Python, it means something completely different. So star star is how you do exponent. Um, and I mixed up my languages. So let's see. So then we can start getting to bigger numbers uh, because, oh, look at that. I cheated. Um, why am I missing a cell phone? Okay. So I actually already did that one, but that's a really big number. So for future reference, put that in some sort of named variable, right? Don't print it out and try to use it that much. Um, all right, but then we can kind of get real small as well. Um, and we can start doing stuff like this. Um, and so that's a real small number. But once we get to a certain point, does anybody remember um, scientific notation? Can anybody explain scientific notation? Go. <laughs> Right. Okay. So basically, it's just a simpler way of writing, like, like this. Okay. Um, so that wait, my finger's the right thing. No. Uh, so like fifty-seven up there. So basically, if you want to, if you have a lot of zeros, you can get rid of them. It's easier to read, right? <clears throat> it is, however, customary to actually go like one more than you strictly like need to to get rid of your zeros. So you'll almost always see something to the left of the decimal, then you know some number of digits, <coughs> and then uh, a counter. 
which is how many zeros go in front of the five really, but with the decimal place moved over as well. Um, but then we start to get into the really fun things where I think I cheated already and wrote it. Um, sorry, let me grab my water. <coughs> Parse that, yeah. Um, so I just executed this number and I got this. Anybody tell me what happened? Because that, that does not seem to be equivalent, right? Any ideas? Computer's broken, literally. Okay. Part of the reason why there's a distinction between integers and floats. We only have a certain number of spots. Okay. Also, the reason why we use scientific notation pretty aggressively, because we only have a certain number of fields. Like literally, the number of digits we can have is limited. So if you were in uh, you know, high school, elementary school mathematics, you ever use a calculator in school. Um, if you ever really were screwing around, you know, when you weren't paying attention to class and just typing in digits, eventually you get the calculator to be wrong, right? Same problem, okay? So basically, it starts slicing things off in language-specific ways. So this is kind of important, um, but in Python, see, it's actually rounding the number, okay? So <clears throat> that's fun. Uh, and then it gets worse. Uh, so this is, I don't know if you can read this, but so uh, this is, you know, really small number, subtract other really small number, um, anybody know what you think you're going to get for an answer for that? Ballparky? It's really easy. Makes perfect sense, right? Yeah, yeah, just straight up zero. I, it, this computer gave up and, and we're just giving you zero. So keep that in mind when, you, when you're starting to do with big numbers, uh, like big in digit count, not in actual size. Uh, weird stuff may start to happen. And what's what's kind of interesting, does anybody know what the difference is between a 32-bit computer and a 64-bit computer? Uh, you may have gone and had to do a download and you had to choose whether you chose the 32-bit or the 64-bit. No, uh, it might all be a bit too young to, but uh, over the course of my career, we've switched from using 32-bit computers to 64-bit computers. So in other words, we have more places to put stuff in a computer we have now 64 slots. Remember the first day we talked about bit versus byte. So we have 64 of those bits now. We used to only have 32. So this would happen with much smaller numbers of digits. But now it's better, right? But it's not that great. So there's a few things you can do here if you're into seriously into like data science, and mathematics, you know, uh, do day trading, for example, or uh, heavy duty fund management. Um, and you can start to get 128-bit computers um, and sometimes 256-bit computers. So you can do even better precision. Um, the other thing that you do is you actually start switching these to be characters, so like letters, and manually doing the math um, and then making new strings with the number. So you stop treating them like numbers and start just treating them like letters, which is... You know, kind of a pain, but works pretty well. Um, but most and most languages have a library for that that's called something brilliant like big number or big num. Uh, so if you ever need something like that, it is solvable if you really need to get out there. But keep it in mind if you're, you know, you have like a loop or, you know, something that's, you know, iterating over it and it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller, you know, you might just start to lose accuracy. Um, but I don't think we're going to run in, you know, we, we try to control the examples you're going to be playing with. So you don't run into this kind of thing, but you need to be aware it's out there because when you're doing stuff in the wild, um, you know, it's going to be a problem. So let's see what else. Um, oh, you know what I just realized? Oh, no, I did do sharing. Never mind. Um, so I lost my train of thought. Okay, so let's see. Let's go back to exponents a bit. Uh, let's just do this. All right, then we have a theory as to what that is going to do. So 
So we know if that was like a five, what would that be if it was a five? That you can do in your head. All right, we'll cheat. So let's say 10 star star five. All right, so it's basically a 10 with, well, it's like a one with five zeros, right? Yeah, five zeros after it. So what do you think 0.5 would do? So you raise it to one half, right? So that's kind of yucky, so it's not a great example, but let's say, what do we think we'll get with, um, trying to give away the answer by accident. Uh, does anybody know what 16 raised to the one half would be? Four. Right, and because it's the, got it. All right, so there you go. So basically you think about how like in mathematics, you kind of do these things, but you kind of don't do them the same way normally, right? You have different symbols and stuff like that. Um, so in Python and true for most programming languages, you do them kind of all the same way because they're really the same operation and we don't want to waste any more characters because uh, going back to we're lazy and we also have a limited number of characters that we can have somebody easily input into the keyboard. All right, so let's see what other examples we have here. Um, and then we can get more fun and sophisticated. Uh, sorry, I scrolled and not, didn't mean to. Um, so we can get a little more sophisticated, uh, and you know, then we can also use parentheses, um, as we've talked about before, to change the order of operations uh, and add infinitum, right? Um, all right, so now going back to the integer versus um, uh, float discussion, so. Does anyone have, and we? I think I showed this already, but does anybody have a theory? What what type will be the output of that? You know, will it be an integer or a float? Like, so will it have a decimal or not have a decimal? Anyone? Float. I think it's a pretty good guess. Right on. So it has a decimal, so therefore it's a float. All right. Now, what if we don't want it to be a float because we want it to start working with things that are also integers, what we can actually do is tell it, tell the computer that we want the output to be uh, integer, right? And so as we talked about before, we can pass, this is a, you know, a method um, and we can pass and then the stuff that's in the parentheses happens first, right? And then the stuff they, that's outside the parentheses happens second, just like it does in mathematics. So therefore we're gonna get an int out of that. And we get a two as promised, right? Um, all right. Anybody have a guess as to how you might go the other directions? Like, what if I have, have an integer and I want it to be a float? Right on. So you just write float. And we're just going to put in a three. And now it's a float, right? Um, and we're going to talk a little bit later today, hopefully, about about types and why the difference matters aside from some of the math problems I told you about before, but we'll talk about types in general. Um, let's see, do we have any other cool examples here? Um, that's another exponent example, I don't know they're boring. Um, so let's see, <clears throat> oh, does anybody have, let's see, do I have it here already? Yeah, um, oh, let's, let's talk about this first. Okay, so, as you know, we can do names, right? So we're going to give that a name. We're going to call that five. What do you think this is going to do? Now, X has been assigned to five. So what do you think is going to happen? I know what I think would happen, and <clears throat> I'm not right all the time. Anybody? How, what would happen if you do that? If you do that in like on paper? Right. Right. So on paper, when you put two letters next to each other, two things next to each other, there's an implied multiplication. Uh, as we talked about before, computers are stupid. Um, we could probably fix this depending on the programming language. Some of them do. Um, but Python likes to be really, really explicit for the reader of the, of the code. 
So 2x doesn't work. Um, as you might imagine, this will work with Pelican. All right, and I think, did we talk about rounding already? Or did I just imagine that we talked about rounding? Like not today, I mean in a prior class. We did talk about it, we did not. All right, if we did talk about it, raise your hand. Okay, cool, That's I thought so, but then I was like, maybe I'm crazy. Um, all right, so rounding 3.7 rounds as you'd expect. Um, and then we can also round to a certain number of places, right, by using that second parameter. Um, and then here's the last question of kind of about numbers. Uh, what type will this be an integer or a float is the result of that, do you think? So as you might guess, right, the answer is 30, but will it give me a 30 as an integer or will it give me a 30.0 as a float? Guesses? All right, it's gonna give us a float because this is kind of a just kind of a piece to remember is like if any portion of the arithmetic you're trying to do is a float it's going to stay float okay it's got, it's not going to throw away precision for the sake of like without you explicitly telling it to okay um and even though it doesn't feel like it's throwing away precision here depending on what you're passing it to it might be right um or whatever so just kind of keep that in mind uh because it can be a headache so Where's my, oh, there we go. Um, why? Where? Okay. I don't know why I dropped out of presentation mode, but whatever. Uh, okay, so just to kind of recap, these will be in the slides that we upload. Uh, so, but keywords here, right? Integers, floats, um, you know, and a real number, and then you know, if you need to refresh your memory a bit on scientific notation, but it's pretty straightforward. We don't do anything. We don't do anything sophisticated with scientific notation. We basically just use it as a way to shorten numbers down when we write them out. Because you know, obviously, you can like change bases and do all kinds of weird stuff. Um, oh, I will also point out. So, Wikipedia, uh, generally speaking, shockingly good at descriptions for mathematics computer science, data science by extension. Um, in general, a lot of the STEM related fields, but mathematics and computer science in particular are the descriptions, the explanations or whatever are ridiculously good. So if you need a refresher on what a real number is, or you wanna go read more about integers or floats or whatever, I highly recommend the Wikipedia page. I haven't read them all obviously, um, but generally speaking, they're very, very good. All right, so um, integer never has decimal point. Uh, integer can be pretty much of any size. Um, and then this is the part I like, I'm always, hard, it's, it's very hard to phrase, right? So it always has a decimal, but it may or may not have anything of value to the right of that. Um, and then, yeah, and so here's the ballpark of the size. Now, why do you think we can't explicitly say it's 15 or 16? Anybody know? Because the computer is doing everything base two, right? Because the computer is all zeros and ones, right? So because it's all base two, you can't map decimal numbers to base two particularly well. So somewhere in here is the, the size of it, but it's not an explicit decimal place because it's not base 10. This is why you should try counting with eight fingers periodically, just make your life more fun. Um, and then, as I said before, maybe harped on a bit, it can be wrong. It really doesn't happen very much, but you need to be aware of it. All right. Strings. Uh, we've talked about strings a bit, I think, already. Um, but we can show. Good gracious. I really can't use a computer for that. Um, all right. So. Does everybody remember what this would do besides, you know, massive cuteness? Yeah. 
a little bit louder, sorry. Right. So, and it makes it into a string. Okay, so it has changed the type. It's it's taken it in and and believes you. Um, all right. What about? Actually, let's do this one first. What about this? Is that going to do the same thing? I think it's going to give an error. All right, because. It detects that you have extra stuff there because as far as the as far as Python is concerned, you ended the string at that apostrophe, right? So for ease of use, we can mix generally quotes and apostrophes to mean basically the same thing. Okay, so now we have that apostrophe, but it's going to get ignored because the starting letter or character for the string is a, is quotes, right? Um, they are actually a little bit more, uh, they actually have a little bit more of a difference than that. Um, but for the sake of most cases, they don't matter right now. Uh, so don't worry about it too much, but it is, they are slightly different. Uh, let's see, there's another way you can fix it. Does anybody know how else I could, if I had used, if I stuck with single quotes, does anybody know how I could put that apostrophe in there and make it still work? Right. Okay. So there is a term again in kind of programming, it's called escaping. Okay. So that backslash, this is also a little bit language dependent, but in Python, it's backslash. Um, that means ignore what you think this should be and just treat it literally, okay? So, or maybe the reverse, maybe it's treated figuratively. Um, but so if I put that escape in there, it will take the apostrophe, even though I started with an apostrophe and still make it a string. Does that make sense? And it's referred to as escaping. It's another one of those English words. I'm not sure how, like, how it maps to actual English, um, but there it is, you use it all the time. Um, so we can do further operations with strings, which I think is fun. So what do you think putting, what do you think that's going to give us? All right, I'm going to start calling on people. Do you have a theory? Uh, no, right behind you. Yeah, right on. All right, so it's going to add them together, right? Because, you know, nerds um and then but what if we wanted to say like straw and fairy like we wanted a space in between um any ideas how we do that very close i think what you meant is correct but what you said was slightly different um but you have to just put quotes around the space like i said which i think is what you meant um so you, that will put a space in there. So basically we can add up anything you want. Correct, right. So another way you can do is it's, oops, it's not gonna ignore the stuff you put in there. So if I can use my computer correctly, that also works. Um, but so we can kind of concatenate them on or we can put them on directly in the strings. Um, all right, so more fun with math and strings. Oops. Any ideas what that's going to do? Given the adding, what do you think it's going to do? No, I don't. Or I don't think so. I think it works. Uh, I'm always surprised. Okay, so. Come on, it's multiple. So we we added the two strings together here. We're gonna multiply them here. What do you think is gonna happen? Right. This is how I reply to most messages from my children. Um, but yeah, so it just kind of does the same. It does the add operation right, but ten times, just like multiplication. Um, and this gets a little weirder. Oh my. All right, I'm just going to show you this one. So that does error. 
because it doesn't make any sense, right? I mean, arguably it could just put the L on one more time, you know, like, but it, it's really weird. So don't do that is what the computer is saying. Um, all right, so we talked about some stuff. Let me just, all right. And then, so if I have 4.5, right? I can, how, if I have that as a number, let's say, let's do X equals 4.5, okay? So now X is an integer, or sorry, is a float, right? So it's just a number. How can I make that into a string? Any ideas? Yeah. So another method we have as a choice is to convert it to a string, right? And so now it's a string. Um, and we can do, oops, I need to get that there, Let's put it here. Um, and we can also do terrible things um, like int of x. And we also get four, right? So, but it was 4.5, right? So we just threw away data. So bad news. Um, all right, let me go back to the slides. So just to kind of highlight or you know, kind of recap, um, as we talked about before, every individual thingy mob offer, right? We call it a character or a char, um, and then a string is a set of characters of any length. Uh, and you know, it can have any kind of character in there, exclamation points, you know, uh, spaces, whatever. The only thing that you have to be careful of is that leading character, if you try to use it in the string itself, you need to either escape it or use the alternate leading character, okay? Um, and you can easily convert numbers to, uh, you know, or sorry, string numbers into their actual number representation. Um, and then you can also go the other way to a string uh, very easily. All right, so I talked, I said we'd talk a little bit about types. Um, so let's talk about types. Okay, so everything in um, Python has a type, literally everything, okay? So we've been talking so far about uh, numbers a lot. So let's find out the type of that number, right? So we have a built-in method that will tell us the type, okay? And it will do the same exact thing um, if I do like that, which will give us a float. But then I can also do and let's see. So what do you think my output's gonna be there? Yeah, I think somebody said in, um, that sounds right to me. And yes, it is because just because there's a name on something doesn't change its type, right? So there's that and then to really beat that dead horse, um, we can do a string and we also get that as well. Uh, I forgot to run this, so let's do that. And then actually, let's do this. All right. So I just loaded um, the like CSV file for the skyscrapers that we talked about in some class before today. Um, and we loaded it into an object. Um, and so now I can do type skyscrapers. Okay. So anybody know what that's gonna be? Somebody remember? All right, so this is a table that we loaded, okay? Um, and so, as you can see, we have that library that we're using. It's mentioned in the syllabus. I've mentioned it a few times, but this library that um, 
uh, you know, some some people made and made available for doing data science with. Uh, it is conveniently called data science. So they have this nice table object in there, which has some nice uh, features about it uh, that we will be using this class. We have been using this class. Uh, so that's what skyscrapers is, because when I did this read table here, it brought it in as a table. Okay. So let's see where I was. Um, so as you can see, right, even that thing, this construct that I created from a CSV file, right, has a type. Um, all right. Uh, then we also have, we've mentioned these a little bit, but they are very important. Does anybody know what that's going to give us? What type that is? Okay. So this one's weird in just that kind of like str is for string. Um, this is actually, the type is actually Boolean, but the shorthand for it most of the time is bool, okay? But it's short for Boolean. Um, and Boolean just means on or off, right? True or false, okay? Comes in way handier than you might think. Um, so just kind of keep in mind, there is there is this data type that is just on or off. Um, and it comes in handy, uh, but it's just called bool in the actual language. Um, all right, so does everybody, so we talked about rounding. What do you think that's gonna do? Come on, I've only said it like three times. I remember everything has a type. So what is it gonna do? What's it gonna say? Close method, but yeah. Oh, actually function or method. So you're, so you're both, we're both right. Um, so even methods, right, have a type, okay? So literally everything. Going back to my brilliant slides, just to cover the types. Um, so here's another example of a method, which is the absolute value. Um, you know, an integer or an int is like two or table or float. Um, and then a string, you know, arbitrary length. So those are all different types. Um, so this kind of stuff is where types start to come in handy, right? It's like, okay, did I end up with a float or did I end up with an int? Did I end up with a string? Did I end up with a, you know, method call or whatever? Um, or here, right, where you just have a name and so you're like, I don't remember what this type is. Um, because a lot of the times, right, when you're, when you're programming something, you've been building, 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 and then you're like, at a certain point, you're like, okay, I don't, you know, I don't know what state this will be in entirely. So I need to check because let's say if it's a float, I want to round it, right? But if it's not, I don't need to bother with that step. I mean, it's kind of an arbitrary example, but I can't think of people. So, uh, so there you go. All right, make sense? All right. Um, and then there's conversions we've talked about. Um, as you can see, don't, you know, don't do, oh, actually this one, I forgot about this one. Uh, this is another thing, this point two that doesn't work. Um, but you know you can't. It, it will not take the written out version of a, of a number uh, and convert it into a number. Uh, if you, any of you want to write a library that will do that, it would make me very happy. So uh, let me know if you do. Um, and then obviously, just cutting off the end of the number uh, is usually a bad idea. All right. Any questions? All right. So let's talk about arrays. Um, and I will say, um, I don't think we're going to get to it today, but um, we're going to start more of the making use of all this stuff next time uh, and going forward, uh, because I know this is pretty dry, but you know, try to give you some of the groundwork. Um, so let's talk about arrays. Uh, I hope my, uh, you know, constant moving around and constant argumentative questions uh, make it slightly more entertaining. Let's see. So, all right. So we have this cool command. Um, actually, let me back up for a second. Um, oops. So remember we said to kind of ignore this part over here. Um, we're gonna talk about it a little bit here. So, so here's that data science module it's called. 
Um, and that's where we got that table from. So this statement says, from this module, go get everything. So star in most of the time related to computers, kind of, it sometimes means multiplication, but uh, commonly also means everything, okay? So, you know, don't replace, like replace this with whatever, you know, fits there. So that's how down here, I can use this table thing because I imported it from data science. It won't be there unless I did that import statement. Then there's another library called NumPy, which I'm trying to remember the exact actual expansion, but it's basically yeah. Like what it what it means? Yeah. Numerical Python. It is numerical. Yeah. Okay. So so NumPy is short for numerical Python. Okay. But NumPy is still too long for most programmers. Okay. So we're going to actually import NumPy as NP. OK, because, you know, two letters is better than four, five, five letters. So we import um, that NP. Sorry, I was trying to find where I am. Um, and we're going to use it a bit. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, I thought it was in this one, too. Um, OK, so make array is actually coming from data science. I was thinking it was coming from NumPy. Um, but make array will do what? You know, it obviously sounds like it will make an array. Does anybody know what an array is? In, it's sort of, kind of, exactly what it sounds like. So it's just a list of things, okay? Um, generally speaking, it's a list of the same kind of things, okay? So in this case, for example, it's five integers, all right? But it's now just going to let you name that whole set, okay? So skyscrapers, for example, is a list of lists, right? It's basically, it's a list that is a skyscraper, you know, a set of skyscrapers and a bunch of attributes about them, right? That's some tables. Um, in this case, we're just gonna say, these are the heights of some buildings. Uh, and so we have this heights name that we apply to an array. Um, and now we have this, you know, set of integers and we can operate on them as a set. So does so anybody have any theories about what doing some, oh boy, doing something like this would do? Sorry, let me get rid of my find window here. All right, so this is what's nice about it being a list of the same kind of thing, okay? is that it's going to divide each of those things by 12. So it's going to say, this is now going to be applied to every piece in here. Does that make sense? All right. So, you know, obviously math, um, but basically you just did that quick division. Um, so now we can extrapolate from there. And what do we get here? Mod. Exactly. So now we multiply each of them by two. Um, and so that's pretty cool. Um, and we can keep going. Right. And we can actually raise them all to the power of two. Um, and then, oops, you know, add one to them. Basically, we can do whatever we want. Um, so Anybody have any ideas about what is going to be in heights now? What 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 am I going to get for that value? Oops, you don't have to tell me explicitly. You can tell me like, is it going to be is it going to be this? Is it going to be something else? Right, it's going to be the original one um, because I never put an equal sign in. Right. So it doesn't modify, it does not actually modify it. It returns the modified version. All right, but then we can do kind of cool things too, where we can start to like analyze the data that's in this thing. So we can say len heights, which is short for length. Uh, and then we can do other interesting things because we can also, sorry, cutting and pasting makes the typing a little bit more likely to be correct. And now we can add them all together. 
Does anybody have any ideas what we could do with the fact that we know how many there are and we know what the total, if we add them all together is? What might we want to know about these heights that we can do with those two pieces of information? I mean, right, who said that, sorry. Uh, all right, so how would I get the average? You know, just tell me. Type the name. Sorry, I can't hear. The name. Oh, oh, like mean, like this. Mean. Mean. Gotcha. Sorry. Uh, the reason that I had a very hard time hearing that is because. Uh, in like, I'm actually unaware of any programming language at all that uses the term mean. It's always the word average. Uh, I don't know why, it just is. So I, I rarely see that word. Um, so sorry about that. I, just, I really had no idea. Um, okay, so mathematically, we can just calculate it, right? So we can say the sum divided by the length, right? And then we'll get it, which is the average or the mean, right? Um, so 65.2, so, so I gave you a bunch of hints. We are programmers, so what does that mean there will be? Come on, lazy, don't like doing things twice. Don't like having to remember anything like uh, a function, like a mathematical function. So what do you think there's gonna be hanging off of NumPy? No guesses? Right? So there's no way I'm typing all that text more than once. So at some point, right, we're just going to write a function that does the sum of the thing divided by the length of the thing, because why would you type that twice? Right? So NumPy has one. Um, and the other nice thing is that you know, less so with this particular example, but when you're using a library like that, they can actually start to think about how to make it more efficient when you have like really complex or difficult uh, mathematical functions or whatever, you wanna think about how to make it more efficient. And what you really want doing that is like a mathematician more than you want me doing it, right? So as a result, it's really nice to be able to use those functions provided by people who, you know, are really into that particular thing all the time so that, it can be more efficient, it can be more accurate, you know, et cetera. Um, so same result. Uh, so the thing to remember here is that when you're, I think we'll get command completion, but so if you will have a guess, I don't know if it's gonna give it to me. Um, oh, no, it did, sorry. Uh, so if you have a guess, you can often check and see if it's there by kind of typing a little bit of it and then hitting tab for the completion. Right, um, and even if it's even if you're slightly wrong, so like this is where like len versus length comes in, right? But if you would type len and hit tab, it would just pop and say, "Oh, oh, you found it!" Right? So um, even if it's been shortened somehow, you can often find it by uh, by you know kind of using what's called tab completion. Um, all right, so we're going to take this and we're going to make another array except this one's gonna be full of strings instead of integers, all right? And these are various types of tuna. Um, and it prints the types of tuna here. And then it has this thing over here, which uh, for the sake of probably most of this class, we don't have to worry about too much, but uh, this is where you start getting into, as I'm sure all of you know, the, uh, there, there are a lot more character sets than just the ones we use in English, okay? Um, and those have come under um, uh, basically an international standard body called Unicode. Uh, so Unicode 8 is what this is. So basically eight bits of representation, Unicode. Um, so that tells you like how much space you have for other kinds of characters that are not like English letters or, you know, um, apost or, uh, sorry, punctuation and numbers, et cetera. So uh, you can actually represent letters in lots of other, like with lots of other scripts, not just other languages, but actually using other scripts. Um, 
It's just the support for that has been a long time coming and relatively slow. Uh, it's gotten better, um, but that's why it's indicating it to you that it's only going to have that character set. So probably shouldn't feed it uh, like a pictographic language kind of in general. Um, so I didn't actually mean to scroll up so much. All right, so now I got tunas. And uh, what if I do times two on that? All right, so before when we did the integers, um, it multiplied each of the elements by two. So what do you think might, is gonna happen here? For each one? Um, that would be my theory as well, but Python doesn't let you shoot yourself in the foot as badly as you would sometimes like to. Um, and so it will actually err because you, because it's a illogical operation, basically. Um, so let's see. So let me print heights again so you can remember what was in there. Um, let's say. Does anybody know what that is going to give me? Okay, so which one's the third one? So 67, 60, 71, 63, 65. 63? That's why I'm pointing it out. Um, so one of the things that is, I think, messy for humans is that most of the time we uh, do things in what's called a zero base. So when we're you know, acting like humans in, in the world, we normally count one, two, three, and I count like a European. Most Americans actually count one, two, three. Um, but in, when we're talking about programming, we normally count from zero. So in other words, zero, one, two, three. So it's not, and this is why I would clarify, it's not the third item, it's the third, it's the three position. So zero, one, two, three, not the third item, which would be seven. Does that make sense? So just remember zero based is always, you know, the way, um, you know, even though that's not how you would count on your fingers, okay? Um, and you get the hang of it after a bit, uh, at least I think you do. Um, and then, so by extension, if we say tunas item zero, so you may remember what we're going to get. I know tuna scrolled off and you probably didn't memorize them. Anyway, have really good memory. Oh, bluefin. Ah, oh, nice job. I would, there's no way I would remember that. Um, okay. So uh, let's do the little recap of arrays. So contains a sequence of values. Um, so generally speaking, they should have the same type. Uh, arithmetic is applied to each element individually. Adding arrays adds the elements if they're the same length. Oh, did I actually show that as an example? Uh, so if I take two arrays with digits in them and then add the two arrays together, actually, let me show that real quick. I think I skipped it by accident. Um, So if I do like heights, oops, plus heights, it will actually like for each element of the two, it will put them together. Um, and then y'all are a smart group. So obviously this is gonna go poorly, okay? Um, oh, and then, Array um, two six eight. That oops, everybody needs a case sometimes. Um, that's also going to go poorly because they're not the same length. So illogical, it, illogical operation, right? So you can't do it because it doesn't know what to map the three to the three to the four. You know, does, does it mean you want to map the zero to the zero and the one to the one and the two to the two? Or alternately, it could mean that you want to map uh, the four to the three, right? And the three to the two, and 
et cetera. So it doesn't know entirely what you want to try to accomplish. So it's just going to get angry at you uh, and tell you to go fix it and be explicit. Um, okay. I entirely lost the window. Uh, and then we're going to talk about this more next time, but a column of a table. So when we were talking about, um, you know, our tables and we have those attribute fields. Uh, so, um, you know, like when we were talking about the, uh, the water and cholera stuff, um, you know, like the number of deaths in the population, right, for number of houses. So those columns are arrays as well. Uh, and you can pull them out as arrays. So then you can do things like multiple, or actually that's how you can do things like compute the per capita deaths, right, uh, using an array. So, but we will talk about that more next time uh, with uh, a cool example. Um, and that's it about arrays. And then last thing for today, we're gonna talk about arranges. Wait, why is it? Nope, that's right. Hold on, sorry. Okay, so we were just making arrays, right? And so what if we need an array that is zero through six? Okay, uh, well, you can type it in like that, but as you know, as I keep saying, we are lazy, so we don't do that. So we're going to pull another tool out of um, NumPy. Uh, and this one, like every time I read it, I think it says arrange, like as in, you know, make something pretty, right? Arrange. But it intentionally only has one R is a range. Um, and so we call these ranges. They're a pretty common term uh, in kind of programming in general. Uh, but basically, it's usually almost always numbers. I don't think I've ever seen it any other way. So it's usually a range of numbers. Um, and it means we get a range, okay? So does anybody notice the problem here between this one and this one? Are they the same? All right, so why are they not the same? You go ahead. Yeah, you know? Right. So the other way to think about it, so we start with zero. So therefore, if you're going to say six, then that's the that's the number of spots, not the final number. Right. So again, as as you get used to it, it starts to get simpler. Um, so we can instead do seven. Um, and I will say to this day, I've been programming, you know, professionally for uh 20 something 20 plus years okay and then uh well and arguably unprofessionally as well uh, but unprofessionally so like not as a job uh for probably another 10 after that i still consistently get off by one errors okay so in other words like i will put in that six when i mean the seven um because i miscounted okay so if you do it wrong, don't feel bad. Everybody does, right? Uh, there's actually an old joke in, in programming that is, um, uh, you know, what are the hardest problems in, in computer science? Um, you know, basically cache invalidation. So knowing when you should clear out a cache, so like basically a copy of something, um, then uh, what, what is it? Uh, like pick, and then like naming things because names are very, very difficult. Uh, and then, you know, but of course, the, what are the two things, you know, that are most important or hardest things in computer science? And then of course, the last one is off by one errors, right? So I hope you all got it and you're just groaning in your head rather than uh, not getting it. All right, theories. What do you think this is going to do? Anybody? All right, you in the middle behind you. Or right, unless you, you think you know the answer?
good guess. Isn't that what you were saying? Yeah, so um, so you have the off by one error problem here, right? So inclusive, exclusive. So just remember that these two, right, is it's going to be inclusive of the first digit and then exclusive of the last one. Um, because it's, you know, basically it's mapping it, right? So um, it's going to give you six spots back. And that's the, that's not going to get as far as the last digit. All right, so then we have some other, another cool thing we can do. Actually, let me just, oh, shoot, sorry, give me one second. Oops, okay. Um, make it so that I'm slightly less likely to misspeak. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, so here's another cool little feature. Uh, anybody guess what that two on the end is going to do? Sounds like a good guess. And there it is. So, uh, you know, you don't always want to count by one, right? Sometimes you want to skip a certain number of digits and get to the next block. Uh, so it's super handy. Um, and then, and you can also do it in kind of like, oh, actually, here's a good example. Um, wait, no, it's not, it's boring. All right. But then you can also get kind of more sophisticated as well, right? So it can be kind of a, a you know, relatively arbitrary amount so that you, you know, and obviously it's gonna do what's logical, but the point is like, don't limit your thinking by, you know, whole numbers or whatever. Um, and then, oh, and then, but of course, everything we've done thus far has been throwaway, right? We still have to give it a name, just like we did the numbers and the strings and everything else, if we wanna like use it later. So now, if we look at A, it's actually got that array in there. And then we can say A dot item E. And whoops, uh, sorry, if you do five. Um, and then you, if you do go back to the eight, right? This is, wait, what? Oh, sorry. I thought I was, I thought I was copying and pasting this one. Um, so this is what's called an index, or usually referred to as an index out of range, okay? But one of the things hopefully you'll learn relatively quickly is it really, if you read this, right? If you read the error, it will usually indicate what's going on. Um, you can usually in your head, right? Throw away kind of the, the words that aren't kind of related or don't make sense to you or whatever. Like this stuff, this stuff. You know, well, I mean, this is called the truth back. Um, usually, this will be the class of the problem that you are looking at. Okay, so this is a type of index error. Okay, um, and so this one is out of out of range. So you can have other index errors, but this particular one means that you ask for a position that this doesn't have. Okay, um, so but again, just kind of reiterating that potential off by one issue where you know you have Right, you have eight spots. Yeah, eight spots, but the eighth spot is uh, doesn't isn't actually there. There, it's the seventh spot because it starts with zero. Um, quickly, um, yeah. So start and step. So this is what you want to remember here primarily, right? Except that these two are optional. Uh, step is how we refer to that jumping, right? You know, if we want to go by two, you want to go by 0.5, you want to go by whatever. Um, and always includes the start and excludes the end, okay? Uh, and I think 